Ladies and gentlemen, now we get to turn to the main event, the conferral of the Washington Institute's Scholar Statesman Awards. Earlier this evening, on our screen and in your program, you saw the caliber of leader who served as recipients of this award in years past. This year, for the first time, we travel to the Middle East to find our honorees. And there we find two men, neither of whom has led a government or a foreign ministry, neither of whom is a diplomat by training or a negotiator of treaties and accords, but both of whom are men who, through force of experience, ideas, and will, have moved millions in their countries, in their region, and around the world. On a personal level, it is truly for me a great privilege to be part of a program that honors these two men. I have known both for decades. I first met Natan Sharansky when Hirsch Goodman introduced us at a cafe in Jerusalem, and I have been an admirer ever since. By then, of course, he had already been through the horrors of the Gulag and was only just starting out on a second stage of terror, Israeli politics. <laughs> I first met Sadedin Ibrahim in Cairo many years earlier and had the privilege of hosting him in Washington as our institute's first Arab visiting scholar soon after I became director in 1993. He had not yet taken on the Goliath of the Egyptian regime, but he had already showed his bravery by authoring for us a study on the vindication of Anwar Sadat in the Arab world. Later, of course, he dared to speak truth to power and languished for that in a Cairo jail. For neither of these men is the job finished. Indeed, the events of the Middle East just this week underscore how much longer is the road to a true democratic peace. But imbued with the spirit of these men, one, in the thick of the contest of current events as chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel, and the other in the thick of the contest of current events back in Cairo, where he teaches young people still at the American University of Cairo, I am confident we will reach the goal. So tonight it is wonderful to host an event that recognizes the hope that each of them separately and both together have inspired in millions of women and men, Jews and Muslims, Arabs and Israelis, peoples of all faith. I will let this video tell the story even better. For the last four years, the Washington Institute has honored scholar statesmen who have demonstrated extraordinary vision and courage throughout their careers. Tonight, we continue that tradition. Today, the Middle East is poised for change. From Morocco to Yemen, the people of the region clamor for democracy, freedom, and the chance for a new life. Our honorees are symbols of that yearning throughout their lives. Natan Sharansky and Saadeddin Ibrahim have led the charge for freedom. They share a story of struggle against oppression, a story of great personal sacrifice, of vindication, and of work still to be done. They fought not only for their own rights, but for the rights of all peoples. They are the founders of movements, reluctant icons, the inspiration for others who struggled with them and after them, and they were, throughout, willing to brave the consequences. If you believe in something, if you're a true believer, then you have to be prepared to take some risks. I was haunted, I was arrested sometimes, uh, uh, persecuted in different forms. For their courage, both felt the crushing weight of tyranny, the betrayal of justice systems that condemned them for fabricated crimes, 
and dispatch them to the torment of prison. Let's make an example of him and let's drive home to all other academics and journalists and thinkers in Egypt that there's a price that would be paid if you run afoul of the will of the Mubarak government. Undaunted, and with the steadfast and formidable efforts of their families, they brought international pressure to bear on their oppressors, and they eventually prevailed in securing their freedom and the freedom of millions who supported their quest for change. I think of the sight of Nathan Sharansky, still in the dominion of his KGB captors, zigzagging his way across the tarmac after they ordered him to walk a straight line. Anatoly Sharansky has fought heroically and showed that you can arrest a body, you cannot put in prison a spirit. They emerged from prison stronger, more determined opponents of autocracy, more resolute believers in the power of freedom to change lives and build peace. Together they have raised their voices, seeing in their movements a convergence across the decades and across differences of culture and politics. And if we add our fight to your fight, then I am assured that we must prevail and we will prevail. These men have given much, and they remind us of the work still to be done, and of our common role in the pursuit of freedom for all people, in the as yet unfulfilled mission to bring peace within nations and between nations. We should think about Saad and his prison cell, and remember that it's our obligation every day that we go forth, whatever our job, wherever we live, whatever we believe, to make sure that we hold dear the rule of law here and around the world. Today, as our hopes for peace and democracy and a culture of tolerance in the Middle East remain clouded by violence and repression, we look to the examples of these two courageous men. They experienced the darkest of days, but never lost faith in the power to change lives and open the doors to freedom. Today, they continue to believe that democracy and peace will eventually prevail in the Middle East. They are an inspiration. We are honored to pay tribute to their work this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Sadedine Ibrahim and the Honorable Natan Sharansky. And to confer their medals, I call up our co-chairs, Zach Schreiber, Tony Beyer, along with Howard Berkowitz and Marty Gross. To Natan Sharansky, scholar and statesman. Few human rights activists can claim to be a household name, known around the world to ordinary citizens and global leaders alike. But for more than a generation, you have symbolized mankind's struggle for liberty. Thanks to you and your fellow strugglers for freedom, you not only liberated Soviet Jews, but you took your message of hope and resilience to your new home in Israel and to people around the Middle East and throughout the world. Your victories have inspired people around the world to dream lofty dreams, to fight for human rights, and to believe that justice can prevail. For demonstrating that courage and faith are stronger than iron and steel, it is my pleasure to present you with the Washington Institute Scholar Statesman Award. May you continue to inspire us and to do important work for more, many years to come. Thank you. Saad Adin Ibrahim, scholar and statesman. Your still small voice spoke up and spoke out again against injustice and tyranny. You paid a terrible price for speaking truth to power, 
yet you persisted, undaunted in your campaign for tolerance, peace, and freedom. For 20 years, you have been associated with the Washington Institute, a badge we wear proudly. A reluctant hero and visionary of great courage, if the uncertainty we see unfolding in the streets of Cairo and elsewhere in the Middle East blossoms into the hoped for democratic peace, history will see you as its prophet. For demonstrating that ideas are more powerful than power, it is with great pleasure that I now present you with the Washington Institute Scholar Statesman Award. May, may your work quickly come to fruition, and may all the people of the Middle East soon enjoy lives of peace and freedom.